Welcome back, everybody. We're here with uh, John McMahon and Nancy Smith. Um, Nancy, quick shout out here, is also a very good friend of Melissa Costs. Um, so that's <laughs> hence the introduction. Hi, so, hello, Melissa. <laughs> but um, you guys, um, you work with Genesis Home Builder, and John, you're with um, Travelers, uh, Travelers Insurance, correct? That's correct. Awesome. <laughs> so, one of the things that we see as a perpetual issue is the interaction that realtors have with builders and not necessarily that it's a that it's always an issue or it's bad it's just that some realtors avoid it and i, and I think that it's and important rumor has it is that it's an issue whether there's yeah. a fact or fiction i think rumor has it that there's some issues well there. well put and you know so many builders in genesis from the, uh, the dawn of time has been very open to working with realtors and mm -hmm. so we want to have them on and we also want to talk about the 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 home buying relationship between um, realtors and clients and builders, and then also talk about some of the insurance options. I don't think people mm -hmm. are, are quite aware of all the, all the potentials here. So Kirsten, kick us off. Yeah, you know, right before the segment started, I was chatting with Nancy, and I, you know, our, our first question for her, I feel like it could be the entire meeting, but talk a little bit about what a positive interaction on both sides for the realtor and yourself, the home builder on the other end, would be in terms of walking into a show home working with new builds as a realtor in general? Sure. Thanks for the question and, uh, and thanks for having us here first of all yeah. uh, as well. I think one of the things that's really important for both parties, both the realtor and the builder to consider is the customer. Really ultimately we're wanting a positive experience for them. Mm -hmm. And so um, you know there's realtors, the, the realtors and builders have gotten together and created a code of conduct um, that's on the CHBA website. And so the number one interaction that, or step of the interaction that uh, creates a positive interaction is for us to know that there's a realtor involved. Mm -hmm. So, and early, and early, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, and and the the step one of that code of conduct actually says that the realtor needs to accompany the customer on the first visit and register themselves as a realtor representing that customer. I have had experiences, positive experiences, where the realtor, of course, didn't have timing that's, that lined up with the customers, but the customers came in and said, here's my realtor's card, I'm working with mm. a realtor. Even that knowledge off base, we're going to respect that clearly the realtor has educated their customer in, in that relationship importance and, and knowing that they're involved. Nice. Yeah, so that, that's a really important step is to just make sure that your customers know that that relationship needs to exist. Yeah. Well, I love how you, th the, just the part about education, because I mean, I even remember, you know, years and years ago when my parents bought a house and they were working with a realtor, um, wonderful, but it was Sunday and my mom was like, oh, let's just go look at these show homes, mm -hmm. right? Like just because, because it's what she likes to do and she was excited and my dad had some time and like, yeah. why not go look? And, yeah. I and we're think, available for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Totally, but, I'm, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, there would have been, I mean, and I, I was younger, but I went with, I went with them on some of them, but there wasn't ever a conversation of we're working with a realtor because for them it was kind of just a fun mm -hmm. thing to do. Mm -hmm. But to your point, I mean, clients will just do that. So it's really important that the realtor has the education process. Like yeah. if you want to go have some fun, do it, but this is the process. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just going to, I'm going to speak to this and put words into the mouth here in terms of the conversation uh, and we'll continue on. But builders spend exorbitant amounts of dollars on marketing and advertising with the intent of driving business yes. to show homes. You guys pay your show home reps, everything else. Like it's, it's, it's big business. So they want to make sure that they get the return off their marketing dollars as well. The other cool part is that they want realtors to bring people in because they want those referrals. It's just the question becomes, is has your, did your client come in because of the marketing that the builder did or because right, of the, exactly. um, because of the, your introduction of the product? And that's where it comes in. They're still even willing to pay if your client saw the marketing, approaches the realtor, wants representation, and that's great. This just means that you guys need to make this part of your buying presentation Absolutely. right at the beginning educate people they want to go look at show homes that they can register the person in advance they can call ahead they can make that stuff happen but educate your clients on the importance of having that representation so um, let's talk about what the realtor then gets as part of that relationship yeah so really it's an assist we're in the sales centers we're the experts on the new home build process and so uh, we appreciate that you're coming with qualified customers to us and Genesis in particular pays the full buying commission to the realtor so that's you know a, a really great um, offer for your team members and I think that 
when you're bringing, that's really what we appreciate is that, that, that qualified customer right. that's coming into our show home. And we know that there's a lot of trust that's being built between the realtor and the client as well. And so really, again, going back to the customer that they want to be comfortable with the process. And so if that representation from the realtor makes them feel more comfortable with the, the negotiation process, uh, some builders negotiate, some builders don't. Yep. Uh, having that conversation up front is also important, maybe mm -hmm. just to say, you know, to a one-on-one -on -one with the sales rep in the, in the show home to understand if there is negotiation yeah. as part of the process. Because... Uh, oftentimes we find that the, the realtors, and I, I was in the sales center myself, and so I, the realtors often will come in and feel like in order for them to earn their keep, so to speak, oh, they'll do they that. have to pit me and the customer against yeah. the realtors, right? right? Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately that costs the customer because they feel that they can't trust this person, this group that's building their home. And so if we can keep that positive relationship and understand if negotiation is part of the process, but to keep it positive and, and happy for the customer, that's ultimately the goal for, for both parties, right? Right. So, yeah. So from that, you, you already spoke to it a little bit, but a little bit about it, but um, in terms of what you, know, you, the builder, get out of it, obviously there's somebody that's qualified walking right. into your door. Anything else? Ultimately, that's what, what we appreciate is being considered in the mix of homes. I think a lot of customers don't understand. It might be an intimidating process to build because we do have homes right from scratch. You can build from scratch, pick your lot, pick your home, pick your options, pick your colors, etc. But we also have homes that are quick possession. So that full range is available to the clients. And if they feel intimidated by the build mm -hmm. process, the option is still to have a quick possession. Um, if the home is a little bit further in the process mm -hmm. and the timing works out, they can still pick some of their final colors, but the home is still done in a, in a shorter time period. I, yeah, I so. have a question for you that, that's not on this list, but in terms of a realtor, you know, somebody you know, like Melissa who works closely with you, Obviously, there must be a huge benefit for the realtor to have, like you said, to have access yes. to all of this inventory that realtors who might be a little bit intimidated working with builders, if they're just kind of looking at resale, there's probably a lot of stuff that they're missing out on. So if a realtor were to for potentially sign up with a builder, I don't know what that process looks like, but I'm assuming that, you know, you working with somebody like Melissa, that she, you're probably keeping her in touch of a lot of new inventory and options. That is just a unique conversation for her to have with her clients that other realtors might not be aware of. Yeah, well, we definitely do want to have ongoing relationships with, with the realtors because, again, we appreciate that they have qualified yeah. customers that are coming in. And, and keeping in mind that maybe not all realtors understand that build process as well. Right. And so we can, we're the experts on that side that we're happy to share that information and, and keep informed. Genesis, we're actually coming up with a list we're really trying to understand the perspective from the customer that it's, we're wanting it to be a happy experience. Their life is changing for the better in their minds when they buy a new home, whether, whether it's resale right. or brand new. And so we're really trying to make sure we understand that that's what they're getting into and to, to ease the process. And we want to share our expertise. So we're compiling right now at Genesis a, a list of um, going through all the departments saying if you... Lindsay in the design department of Genesis were to send out your mom to buy a house, what advice would you give her? Nice. And to I compile love that. a list, yeah, to yeah. compile a list, list, you know, from the construction department, from the design department, from the, the interior selections process, um, from the customer liaison perspective. So to come up with an expert list that we're going to share with everybody. Nice. And, uh, and certainly with uh, your realtor team as well. Very cool. So just quickly reiterate, perfect world. Um, what would you have, what would you like to see as the realtor's perfect amount of participation in the process? Again, I'm going to go back to it's probably dictated most by the client. Okay. Because that relationship in some cases is newer and sometimes it's really strong. Sometimes there, it's my cousin that's my realtor, right? Yeah. And, and so whatever comfort level the customer expects, again, again mostly it's, it's wanting to not feel like 
the realtor and the customer are against the big bad builder, totally. right? It, we're here to help those customers. We're looking for long-term relationships and referrals, et cetera. So we want it to be a positive relationship. And, and so to, you know, if, if through the selection process, the customer prefers the realtor to be there because they just have more experience with homes and the resale factor down the line for that customer we're totally open to them being a part of it. You've actually given the perfect RECA answer, mm -hmm. which is uh, <laughs> our, our governing body, which is let your customer decide. So your oh, okay. customer is the one that, that yeah. decides. So, so it's awesome. Um, yeah. One more question for you, um, Nancy. Kirsten, you want to take it? No, go ahead. Okay. You're on a roll. Uh, <laughs> so what does the client get? Why the new build versus, I broke my pen, why the new build versus resale? Um, and I think we're going to be able to transition perfectly from this into John's. Uh, information about travelers? Well, I think one of the biggest benefits is a peace of mind. All through the build process, we have had to have the home inspected all the way along. And this is another little kind of side benefit is that the um, appraisal process or that inspection process isn't necessary. Can, so it can save a, a few hundred dollars for customers because we cannot turn over the home right. without it being approved by the city at all levels and meeting the you know, building codes f um, through the Canadian government, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Alberta yeah, yeah. government and the city requirements. So we've met those all along the way. And the selection, I think, is that we, that we offer so that if people are looking for um, something to build and they want to have their own colors, they're going to get a fresh new home and they've picked the colors and they've picked the options for it. And so that variety and that, um, that new home smell yeah, <laughs> is, for is sure. kind of what they get from it too. And then the peace of mind, which again you mentioned ties into the warranty, um, huge factor for them to, to benefit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to let John speak to that. But I'll get you yeah. to slide around too, sure. just so that okay. John we can uh, yeah. sure. get swap you here, I'll let you yeah. Oh, you swap. Yeah. Perfect. I guess, John, why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about how the warranty mm. started in Alberta. Sure. So um, back in December of 2012, the Bill 5 was passed, so it's become legislated. So the Alberta government uh, had a lot of issues. They did a huge investigation in the province to find, you know, all these huge assessments homeowners were getting hit with, home, mm -hmm. home builders disappearing with money, homes falling apart, etc. So they compiled quite a detailed uh, investigation they started looking at the other two provinces that had legislation, Ontario and BC. And you know, I, you may or may not know about the BC leaky condo crisis about 16 years ago. I did hear about that, yeah. Yeah, so you know, their home warranty uh, group went bankrupt. You know, they, they legislated it. A whole bunch of insurance companies came in to kind of deal with it, pick up the pieces, and and do what's right for the consumers because it's all about consumer protection. So as of February 1st, 2014, <coughs> it took effect. So now any, any building permit issued has to have warranty on that home. So, mm. so you know, it's, it's all about consumer protection. And uh, so that's why Travelers is involved. It's now governed by the superintendent of insurance. It's an insurance product and it's an, a surety product. And Travelers is the largest surety provider in North America. This is, this so. is so interesting right. to me because mm -hmm. um, the only thing, <coughs> not the only thing, but you know, as far as my knowledge, even introduced Nancy before this session, I thought it was only Alberta New Home Warranty. That no. I thought they were the only <coughs> players. I thought it had to have Alberta New Home Warranty on here. So with the insurance or the, the acts that came out, you right. just need to have um, warranty through some insurance provider. Correct. And in fact, now there's seven providers in the province. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are brokers with an insurance company behind them. We're the only direct writer. So you're dealing with the same people from start to finish. So wow. we're, we took the approach after BC, we're the largest provider there, and we, we, we learned the lesson of you have to be very proactive with your builders rather than reactive like typical insurance. So we, with working with Genesis, we're fully ingrained with their team, their group, where we know all their construction guys on a first name basis. Wow. We have a tech team that goes on site. We, you know, we do all the underwriting. We get, uh, get to see the projects before they're launched because we're in fact warranting it. And now that it's an insurance product, each homeowner, when they take possession of their home and warranty starts, we send them a, a, an insurance policy. So it's got their name on it and our name on it. Genesis or the builder's name's not even on it. So you get third or fourth homeowner, they, they may not know who built the home. And if there's issues to file a claim, they can come directly to us. But you know, we work with Genesis, they're great. We, you know, yeah, they yeah. take care of all the problems before we even hear about it. So. Awesome. It's been great to work with them. Yeah, yeah. very cool. So, yeah, Kirsten. 
So, yeah, who, who's responsible for controlling the warranty? I guess that would be you. Controlling the warranty is us, but now that it's an insurance product, it falls under the Insurance Act. So you, you deal with Treasury Board Finance, which is the superintendent of insurance. Um, but homeowners under the Insurance Act can claim directly to their insurer without notifying their builder, just like true insurance. Mm. So um, in normal case, you know, we always get our builders involved and, and everything's taken care of most of the time. So, but that's how it's governed. <laughs> And what's the, what's the mandatory <coughs> warranty? The warranty warrant itself, yeah. Prior to February 1, it was a voluntary warranty. It was a 1-5 warranty, which is one-year labor material, five-year structure. Right. Today's world, it's gone to a 1-2-5-10 warranty. Okay. So you get one-year uh, labor and material, two-year delivery to di distribution with labor and material, five-year building envelope with the option to purchase two more additional years to seven, and 10-year structure. And the old limits, you know, back in the day were maybe $100,000. Now in a single family home, it's $265,000 wow. of protection wow. or the lesser of the cost of the home. What all so, comes into the, um, the building <coughs> envelope, just as a quick, um, what's all encompassed in that? Yeah, typically your walls, assembly, your roof, exactly. So that, that was never covered ever before in Alberta. And in BC, we, you know, we've, we've seen the outcome of that. So with building mm -hmm. sciences and new codes evolving, you know, there's a real focus on, on doing it, right? So um, that, that's the big focus now. That's where the real dollars in, in insurance claims come from. Mm -hmm. In the multifamily world, it's even more. So now you're looking at a one, two, five, ten, but your limits in a condominium are $130,000 just for your inside unit. Right. And then for your common property, it's 130,000 times the number of units to a maximum of 3.3 million per building. Wow. So if you have a you know condominium complex, row townhouses with several buildings, you know those those are your limits and coverage. I'm so. gonna ask an uneducated question, just, <laughs> just because I, because Go. I don't know. Go. So if somebody were to buy a, um, so let's say there's a, a development that mm -hmm. somebody like Genesis would build, and it kind of is a row of infills. There's mm -hmm. five or six of them, but they're all new homes. Yep. And then something happens within the period that the roof is supposed to be covered. So that means that if there were to be any you know, kind of special assessment on that complex, mm -hmm. the homeowners don't have to pay for them. That would all be covered by the new home insurance? Correct. They would make the claim with the, the warranty provider. So typically there's no special assessment charges within the time of a warranty on a new build? There should not be, no. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, stuff's covered. So, so yeah. um, two final questions in mm -hmm. one here. Um, tell us about when the warranty starts, when the initiation of it is, and also, mm -hmm. um, how, does, how do claims get assessed? And, and sure. So, so now, under the legislation and the regulations, they give the earlier of a number of dates. One, you know, being possession. Uh, one being occupancy or transfer of title. We let the builder and the homeowner choose that day. Typically, it's when you're handing them the keys, they're happy. And, you know, right. that's, you know, you do your walkthrough and everything's happy. So, it's mm -hmm. under, the, under the, leg, uh, the regulations, it's uh, commencement of warranty is the date, the commencement date. So as soon as that date is written down and both parties agree, we issue the policy with that trigger date with all the other expiry dates on, on, on your policy. So you get to see that, you get to hang on to that. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. And now, it's, now that it's um, controlled by the government, they have an online system similar to your land title. So every home will be logged into the system. And it's a, publicly, it's a public system. You can log in, see this address, see the warranty provider, and how much warranty is left on that home. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. So. In terms of, I guess the last question is, in terms of how claims are assessed, mm -hmm. um, what's that process like? Typically, what, what we do, our, our practice is we get the builder in right away for whatever reason if, the builder and the homeowner don't want to, you know, meet and, and decide on these issues. We get involved. We do a formal report, and we decide all the list of items whether they fall under the insurance policy or not. Now, under the legislation, contractual issues, financial issues aren't defects. Right. So they can't be judged under this. Right. So, but what we offer with, you know, especially with Genesis and other groups, is a mediation process before you get to that. So if you get a homeowner that's having some issues in the builder and you can't really come to terms, get us involved. We're happy to sit down with both parties and hash it out. And typically through that process, we get all the other things on the table as well, yeah. right. rather than that going to 
record a Queen's Bench or something serious. So awesome. Yeah. John, thank you. Thank you no so problem. much for that. I want to go back to Nancy here for a second. Mm -hmm. Slide over. So, uh, couple of, yeah, I don't need to. Okay, yeah. you know, okay, well, you're perfect. You can, you can switch. switch. Yeah. It's perfect. Um, Nancy, take us through. You guys got a, a lot of builds going yeah, on in Calgary question. right now. Yeah. Take us through a few of your um, your products. Um, we have some quick possession homes you sent us some information on that yeah. we're also going to send out to you guys. Um, take us through some of these. So we have three communities that we're building in right now. Nice. Uh, Airdrie, we have a townhome project uh, called Newport. Nice. And so that should uh, be the first one we have up on the screen here. Yeah. Comes up here. Yep. And there we go. sorry, yeah, Airdrie, and then we also have. Um, ho hoping that most people have heard about the canals. Uh, we have Pier 11, which is uh, what's showing on the screen. The uh, new homes there that we have are single family. And we also have side-by-side -side duplex product there as well. And so a good variety in Airdrie in itself. We've, we're covering everything from um, the, the 180s, 190s, up to um, you know bungalows along the canals wow, there. Wow, that's yeah, made so people believe they can get a home for 180 or 190 Yeah, that's a, that's yeah, that a, is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah, a new home. Wow. So, um, and I just want to also um, tie in the um, that Travelers has some other products that help people with down payments. Um, and so we're working with them to, uh, hmm. to set those programs up with Gen Genesis. So, you know, when you've been renting for a while, sometimes it's hard to get that um, down payment put together. So uh, Travelers has some good um, products for that too. Oh, you guys are also building in the Northeast? So we're correct? also in the Northeast. Saddlestone is our community there. We also have uh, not quite ready or not right um, building yet, but for sale for a townhome product there. And then we also have a, a good range of duplexes again and single family. So we're covering that full range of products and price points for people. And That's you guys are also in the Northwest. And all in the Northwest. So we're just wrapping up in Sherwood. We have six, five or six homes left there. And then we also just uh, have a whole 18 homes, uh, smaller project, but 18 homes in Evans Ridge um, that are all in, the, in production as well. So um, at various stages, so lots of time to still pick some options and pick some colors there as well. Outstanding. Nice. Mm. Um, Nancy, John, thank you guys so much yeah, for, thank you thank you very for much. Having yeah. us. giving your time and, and we really encourage you guys. Obviously, Genesis has thought about the realtor throughout this process, which I always love and you guys have been um, willing to work with realtors for a long time. Yeah. And, and you know, we honor that as an industry and stuff. So we love representing our clients yeah. and you guys have made that, mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a much uh, easier partnership to work with, yeah. so that's always, that's outstanding. Yeah, we we definitely value that relationship as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Great. guys. No yeah. Kirsten, what do we got coming up next week? Um, going to be on a cruise. Don't know what you guys have going on. Next <laughs> <week>. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, well, you're not kidding. I'm we will be on a cruise. But, but Dave uh, and Steve will be <laughs> here. Um, one, they, they're they're going to have a really good meeting. One of the things I want to highlight about um, what they're going to be doing is there's a man named AJ who works at Sona Visual. And on our Facebook agent feed chat, I've noticed, he's one of our preferred suppliers, but I've noticed a ton of amazing feedback coming up in terms of his photography. Um, there's some really cool drone stuff that they do, feature sheets, virtual staging. Like, there's a lot of great products. So he's going to be coming on and talking a lot of, of the creative marketing solutions that he's offering to some of our agents, uh, especially kind of in this marketplace that you can really do to make some stuff stand out. So he's going to be on, and Dave and Steve will be talking about some other stuff too, so they'll be here. Cool, cool. Tune in. And, and we'll be right back again. Thank you too for joining us. Thanks. And we won't be back actually. We're going to sign off, and here's a cool video about a little reminder about why you should be making your bed a little bit more often. Um, that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great week.